You can run an MA3 exactly like it's an MA2, which is one of the quickest ways to miss all of the great things that make MA3 powerful. I know, because that's what I did for years. Early MA3 felt clunky to me, especially recipes. At face value, their advantages were unclear and they were confusing. So I fell back on an MA2 style workflow. I kept a clean show file, but I was really using MA3 as if it was an MA2 with a fresh coat of paint. But last year when the updated recipe editor released, that's when I finally figured out why recipes were so great. Their ability to switch out fixture selection without storing and removing values from a queue. The ability to update timings without calling those values back into the programmer and restoring <laughs> updated values. Changing a matrix out easily. Even updating those values on the fly if you wanted to. Those were all amazing, and that's when it clicked. That's when recipes moved from an abstract concept that didn't make sense into a really powerful tool that I was missing. So I started using recipe lines for phasers when I needed fade and delay times inside of a queue. But I hadn't done a 100% recipe based show, and I wanted to challenge myself to do it. And this is where things get tricky. This wasn't about fixing a bad workflow. This was about adopting a completely different way to program. So here I am on the other side of the show, and how did it go? I'm glad to tell you that I failed. So you might be wondering, why even bother? Well, I'm gonna give you one great reason and then we'll get into some of the challenges. So the scope of this project was build a new scenic design and LD the show. I programmed about 75% of the show ahead of time in previs. So when I got to the site, we immediately built the scenic design. We had to tweak a couple of mover positions because we made some alterations based on where we wanted musicians to be when we were actually in the room and I was working with the client. Within a minute, I updated my selection grid positions on all of my movers and boom. I knew that every single one of my recipe based cues that had any delay or fade times based on them were good to go. Didn't even need to check, they were automatically fixed and ready to go. That alone made the work worth it. Let's talk about why I failed and what that actually means. The goal was for 100% of the looks on stage to be driven through recipe lines. No data stored in cues otherwise. Here's why that's difficult. I've summed it up into four main challenges. Number one is speed versus structure. The moment you need to start making changes, the benefits of recipes can begin to undermine themselves. Let's take a look at the show file. This is the opener sequence. 327 timecode events and 44 cues on the main sequence. And honestly, it doesn't look too bad. There are a couple of cues with some mixed data of recipes and hard-coded values, but most of it comes from recipe lines. And if I uh, toggle our show recipes, we can see that there are quite a few in there. If I flip to our second song though, this is where it uh, starts to look a little rougher. I even have a cue where I didn't have a recipe line. This is where old habit showed up first. For face lights, it's extremely easy to punch in fixture values or grab them from the layout, but in all recipes workflow, every single value has to come from a group and a preset. On this show, I was balancing face lights against a video wall while watching the cameras. The cameras weren't shaded live, so consistency was everything. If we take a look at the content of our welcome queue, and I turn our recipes off, most of this was quick programming that I needed to do on the fly to make sure that it looked right. These values are hard-coded because I needed everything as quickly as possible. My old workflow was fast, it just didn't translate to all recipes. Challenge number two is managing recipe lines. Recipes scale fast, and that's their strength and their weakness. Q parts help, but I was bad and didn't super use them as an organizational tool. I think that's a lesson that I learned. But if we go back to our opener, let's just look at Here's a couple of cues that I grabbed, and granted, this is across a couple of cues, but look at how many recipe lines we have here. If I even look at just our first cue here, look at all these. They can become pretty cumbersome to manage. It's easier here where this cue, for example, has just the one. This cue only has three recipe lines, and I can pretty clearly see what's going on because my groups are color coded. But once you have dozens of recipe lines stacked in a queue, managing them becomes cumbersome and there's not a lot of flexibility to rearrange or restructure them outside of cutting and pasting. Honestly, for something this powerful, organization is critical, and right now, managing recipe lines is one of the areas that needs the most improvement. So challenge number three is using the recipe editor. Most of the time, I don't pull up the physical recipe editor because Screen Real Estate's a premium. I'm not on a full size here. So I'll, from this view, toggle it with a macro, but as I cycle through different presets to look at, it's just stacking recipe lines here. And I do have the cleanup function, but I hate having to think, okay, I have 20 million <laughs> recipe lines that I've created by looking at these different values, by trying to see what looks right on stage. So now I have, and I do have a macro for cleanup, but I have to think about cleaning up before I store this value. I just don't love the way that that works. And it's not good for intensity and it's not good for color. And that kind of takes us into challenge number four, which is the need to preset everything. 
If I go and I look at colors here, yes, presetting everything is absolutely the right way to manage your data. And touring folks are gonna gasp when I say this, but when I was programming in this room full time, I very rarely presetted color. I would use the color picker and set what looked right to my eyes. I know that's gonna cause me hassle down the line if I'm cloning to different fixture types, but I'm in a fixed install room with fixed fixtures on stage and programming that's only in that room. It never bothered me knowing that I would make my life harder if I was translating to other fixtures. And honestly, even when I cloned certain data to different fixture types, it was never really a problem having hard-coded color data. Don't, don't do as I say. <laughs> uh, don't, don't be like me, use this workflow. But that's what I was doing. And honestly, it worked well. So the adjustment to programming instead of having a color picker where I'm picking exactly what I want or I'm just quickly pulling a saturation fader down to now working on a grid of color presets. Or frustratingly, if I go and I need to change a color to something less saturated, I have to go here and find the less saturated version because I like the hue of 150, but I want saturation 70 instead of saturation 80. I have to do that. That's not as great of a workflow. Put simply, recipes reward discipline, but they punish improvisation. So with all of that said, why even bother? I'm glad you asked, because there's so many benefits. I had a set of six hits on the opener. When I wanted to adjust the timing, I could do all of it at once, or take it a step further and throw the timing into an matrix pool object and update everything from a single place. These are the moments where recipes shine. For the opening of the song, I started with an effect on my pixel fixtures. It didn't pop enough on its own, but duplicating the recipe line and adding my movers group took just a few seconds. Now add in universal phasers. You can take one phaser, reuse it, and manipulate it however you want. No need to maintain five slightly different versions of the same effect. And because every value has to come from a preset, it forces you to have good habits. It's more rigid, but it's more intentional. Everything I programmed ahead of time translated perfectly to the real world stage changes. All I had to do was update the selection grid. Any cleanup I had to do was any old programming I was pulling forward, which even though, all things considered, it was pretty clean programming and would have been clean for an MA2 show file, it had nothing on how smoothly recipes updated them. Recipes are intentionally low priority. They can coexist with other data, but the moment you throw something from the programmer into a queue that overlaps with a recipe line, that other data will take priority. But all of that said, if recipe lines are affecting one group of fixtures and regular data is affecting another, they can happily coexist. So after all of this, what did I actually think of the challenge? I walked away realizing that recipes were far more of a game changer than I gave them credit for. Before the challenge, I had really come to understand why they were great, but it's another thing to experience how they're great. When I had to make real world changes to the fixture layout, everything was just fine. There's no problem whatsoever, no cloning, no pulling values back into the programmer and fixing phase or any delay in fade times. All of that was perfect. That alone makes it worth it. The trade-off is a more complex programming process, but I think that's something that I would get used to with more time doing it. I think the real problem is I haven't done it enough. But it all finally clicked. Recipes aren't about trying to program faster. They're about programming in a way that survives and adapts to change easily and effortlessly. It feels a little clunky at first, but the benefits so outweigh that. I love everything I'm learning. I hope you guys are too. Keep hanging along for the journey. Leave a comment if you have any questions and I appreciate all of you. Have a good one.